Chapter 89 The next morning, Lin arrived at the service hall bright and early. Expecting a relatively empty space at this time, Lin was surprised to find it packed to the brim upon arrival. The most conspicuous feature of the task hall was a whole wall on the right side upon entering, presumably the task board mentioned by Angley. Covered in task orders, the wall was surrounded by apprentices. A succubus approached, clutching a small stack of papers, recognized by Lin as the same succubus who had attended to him yesterday. Tearing down all the old tasks from the wall, the succubus replaced them with new ones. Lin squeezed through the crowd to reach the center. With a physical fitness approaching twenty points, Lin easily parted the apprentices crowding the sides. Seeing Lin's familiar face, the succubus who was prepared to leave offered a slight smile and waved in greeting. The separated apprentices grumbled but refrained from causing any trouble. This was the service hall. No one dared to cast spells here, as those who dared had basically become fertilizer for the magical plant gardens. Lin quickly scanned through the tasks. Acquire ten well-preserved blue-silver grass plants. Procure two attractive elf slaves, gender unspecified. Need a wizard proficient in undead studies to assist with an experiment. Acquire poison potions. The tasks were diverse, covering a range of types, but most required purchasing something. The rewards varied greatly, with some offering raw materials while others paid in magic stones. Lin thought for a moment and requested to see Toby at the front desk. I'm sorry, but Lord Toby isn't available today without an appointment, the receptionist elf girl gently replied, blinking her big sparkling eyes. Retrieving Toby's business card from his ring, Lin presented it to the receptionist. Upon seeing the card, the elf girl's demeanor changed immediately. Please wait a moment. Putting a seashell-shaped tool to her ear, she inquired and soon relayed the response to Lin. Lord Toby is currently out on a business trip. Could this evening work for you? Sure, Lin replied. It wasn't urgent anyway, he just wanted to inquire about some information regarding the wizard tower. Excuse me, friend, but you seem a bit lost. Are you new around here? Can I help you with something? A stout wizard approached, followed by a black-haired companion. I'm Jim, but you can call me Honest Jim, the stout wizard introduced himself. Lin, Lin replied. Wizard Lin, I've been in Demon City for thirty years now. I know every nook and cranny of this place like the back of my hand. Since you're new here, let me give you a detailed tour. Don't worry, it won't cost you a thing, Jim offered, patting his chest. The companion beside initially had some doubts about why his good friend became so enthusiastic and even called himself Honest Jim. Who didn't know that your nickname is Miserly Iron Rooster? Immediately after, he suddenly realized, looking at Lin with a somewhat fervent gaze, Shall we go to the lounge inside and chat? Lin suggested. He remembered that the lounge inside was accessible to apprentices of the Abyss Wizard Academy. As for going outside, Lin decided against it. He wasn't familiar with the area outside, and it would be awkward if he ended up getting lost in the alleyways. From his hometown all the way here, the last thing he needed was to get knocked out in an alley the next day. Um, my friend and I aren't eligible to enter the lounge inside, Jim said awkwardly. Aren't you both apprentices too? Lin's gaze fell on the wizard robes worn by Jim and his companion. Were these two not wizard apprentices? We are, but we're not apprentices of the Abyss Wizard Academy, Jim explained. Lin pondered for a moment, then understood. So Demon City refers to this entire area? Lin asked. Exactly. Many people like to call this place Demon City because it's the closest spot on the wizard continent to the Abyss and Demons, Jim explained. Are there many app apprentices from the Abyss Wizard Academy in Demon City? Lin asked. Quite a few. Every year, apprentices from various avenues come to Demon City. Unlike some wizard factions outside that admit students at regular intervals each year, Demon City accepts apprentices and wizards all year round for 13 months, but the requirements are quite strict and many people don't meet the standards, Jim said. Those who can enter the Abyss Wizard Academy are talented wizard apprentices, and many of them come with skills. Very few are complete novices who have just started learning about wizards. Wizard Lin, you're probably not a complete novice when it comes to being a wizard, are you? Jim asked. Lin shook his head, his expression unreadable. So, 
The third-level apprentices who have the potential to become official wizards rarely show themselves. They usually stick to their own circles, either collecting experimental source materials when they're out or seeking more knowledge when they hit a bottleneck. Most wizards spend the majority of their time studying and researching, so those who are out and about every day are mostly like us. Clearly not the most talented, but still striving apprentices, Jim lamented. Glancing to the side, Lynn observed the hall packed with apprentices. They clustered around the task board like temporary workers waiting to be recruited. Some apprentices had torn wizard robes, simply patched them up and continued wearing them. There were also wizard apprentices with white beards holding magic books, bowing their heads and quietly discussing with young apprentices whose faces were still youthful. Some pairs or trios collaborated to take on tasks involving source material gathering, hastily leaving the hall. Demon City has many foreign wizard apprentices like us. They're all here seeking opportunities to break through to become official wizards. After all, the Abyss Wizard Academy is a major force and opportunities here are undoubtedly more abundant than in ordinary places. Some people also aim to try entering the Abyss Wizard Academy, Jim coughed twice. My sources are quite reliable. If you need any magic source materials, I can inquire through my channels for you. If you have something to sell, I can also help you find suitable buyers. Do you happen to know any construction experts? Lynn inquired. Of course, I have a friend who specializes in construction business. The buildings they construct are of excellent quality. If you have any specific requirements, you can tell them. After the experiment, they can extract memories from the construction period to ensure the safety of your building, Jim explained. Is there really a spell like that? Lynn found it unlikely that apprentices could delve into spells involving memory extraction. Indeed, but it's not a wizard, it's an earth elemental, Jim clarified. An earth elemental. Lynn assumed that memory extraction ability must be an innate racial talent of its species. How does your friend charge for their services? The fees are quite reasonable, based on the area and complexity of the building you need. However, their fees might be slightly higher than market prices, but the quality is guaranteed and confidentiality is ensured, Jim replied. That sounds good. Help me contact them and I'll discuss it with them later, Lynn nodded. All right, Mr. Lynn. Normally, there would be a brokerage fee, but since this is the first time you have become my client, I'll waive it this time, Jim said earnestly. Hmm. Lynn nodded, and Jim turned to leave. Seeing the conversation between Lynn and Jim come to a temporary halt, the black-haired wizard standing nearby spoke up promptly. Mr. Lynn, hello, I'm called List, I'm a potion master, and I am proficient in many basic magic potions. Magic potion studies was not an obscure field of study, many wizards were skilled in crafting magical potions. I'll keep you in mind if I need anything, Lynn replied. In the mortal world, many people talked about wizards who could brew all sorts o, oh, f strange bubbling green liquids. Magic potions served various functions, including healing, poison, utility, and explosive properties. I'm not here to promote my potions. I hope to become your follower, List said. A follower? Yes. I'm already 38 years old this year, and I've just barely become a second-level wizard apprentice. Without opportunities, I may never become an official wizard in my lifetime, and then I'll have to find a way to perform the transformation ritual to extend my lifespan, List said with a bitter smile. I can't help you become an official wizard, Lynn declined. But you surely will in the future, List insisted. Do you believe in me just like that, even though we've just met? We have indeed just met, but I've known Jim for five years, and I trust his judgment, List said seriously. Jim is a broker. He knows many people in Demon City. His resources are extensive. In the past, he has also seen other apprentices from the Abyss Wizard Academy, but he has never shown such respect to anyone like he does with you this time. Lynn thought for a moment, figuring it must have been yesterday when Wizard Heron brought him in, and perhaps Jim saw him when Toby, the administrator from the service hall, escorted him out. Otherwise, he couldn't imagine why an ordinary wizard apprentice like himself would be valued. Let me look into it first before I say anything. Anyway, you know Jim, don't you? Lynn didn't directly agree, giving a vague answer. All right, by the way, Lord Lynn, 
Here are the potions I made. You can check their quality. List's spatial ring flashed, and the next moment he produced three bottles of potions and handed them to Lin. Lin took the potions and put them back into the spatial ring. Are you familiar with the surroundings? Upon seeing Lin directly put the potions back into the ring without even looking at them carefully, List paused for a moment, a hint of disappointment flickering in his eyes. Nevertheless, he managed to force a smile. I'm very familiar with the Central City area. I've been in Demon City for eight years now. However, Demon City expands every year, so there may be some areas on the outskirts that I'm not very familiar with. Walk with me. Lin walked ahead, with List falling half a step behind him. No need to be so formal. Let's just treat it as a casual stroll between friends, Lin said, placing his hand on List's shoulder. Chapter 90 All right, but Lord Lin, you really kept a low profile, admired List. How so? Lin chuckled. You haven't even worn the apprentice emblem, List pointed out. Do I need to? Lin wondered. Yes, it's better to wear it, because Demon City isn't actually very safe, List explained. I remember Demon City doesn't allow conflicts, Lin said. That's only for conflicts between apprentices and the official residents of Demon City. If you don't have the apprentice emblem or official residency proof, you're not protected. Even if you're killed, you only need to pay compensation, List said. Is that so? Lin thought of the protection of citizens and nobles in Rome, where there were many slaves who were fundamentally not treated as human beings. Guided by List, Lin explored the central district thoroughly. Along the way, he also entered some shops to inquire about market prices. After half a day, Lin had a good understanding of the situation. Many industrial chains in Demon City were very complete, ranging from magic armor to various magical plants, high-energy ores, magic potions, alchemical items, and even sales of magical creatures. Moreover, the prices were stable. The prices of many mid- to low-level resources were within a certain range. Of course, quality also determined the price, and some raw materials with exceptionally good quality were much more expensive than others of the same kind. Returning to the service hall, Lin saw Jim and a conspicuously tall figure standing by the entrance, waiting. Sorry for the wait, Jim quickly said. We just arrived a moment ago. Mr. Lin, this is my friend Mountain. It's given itself the name Mountain, Jim enthusiastically introduced the towering Earth Elemental standing beside him to Lin. The Earth Elemental was a humanoid life form constructed from rubble, with many fragments floating in yellow mist, swirling and rotating like nebula. These yellow mists constituted its essential life structure. Mr. Mountain, Lin greeted. Hello, Mountain replied its voice sounding like two pieces of hard rock rubbing against each other. Let's go to my place first and discuss how to build. I have some ideas, Lin suggested. Jim knew he wouldn't be able to listen to the discussion about building, so he said, Lord Lin, this is my communication conch. If you need anything, just contact me through it. Jim handed Lin a small conch-like object. It looked a bit like the conch used by the elf receptionist yesterday. How much? Lin asked as he took the communication conch. It's free, a complimentary gift. It would be great if you're willing to keep my contact information, Jim said. How does it work? Lin found the palm-sized conch quite intriguing. Jim took out a similar conch from his pocket. When the two conches approached each other and their tentacles touched lightly, a thread of light emerged from the shell openings. The two tentacles touched gently in midair, then retracted. They've left their respective scents. If you want to contact me, just tell it when the time comes. The usage is very simple. Just inject your mental energy into it. Jim explained as he returned the communication conch to Lin and waved his hand. Looking forward to continuing our cooperation next time. On the way back to his residence, Lin noticed that Mountain seemed to float when walking. Although the legs resembled those of a humanoid, its movement seemed unrelated to these legs. The floating earth elemental hovered behind Lin like a ghost. The two arrived at Lin's place. Mountain seemed to sense something and turned its head to look towards the backyard. Walking around the corner of the house to the backyard, Lin's eyes darkened at the sight before him. The backyard was filled with numerous dug-up holes, resembling rat burrows. Many goblins were energetically digging into the earth. What are you all doing? Lin asked, somewhat surprised. 
Boo rushed over, looking somewhat nervous as it glanced at Lin. Master, we're digging shell, ters. We goblins don't care much about living quarters. As long as we have a hole or a cave, it's enough. You don't need to spend money on building houses for us. Lin fell silent. Digging like this makes it difficult for me to build structures on the ground, and this utilization is too low. Let them stop for now. Boo realized the mistake and hurried to instruct the goblins to stop. You goblins are quite considerate, came a teasing voice from afar. Following the source of the voice, Lin saw that the neighbor next door, across a small river, had erected a tower over ten meters high. At the top of the tower was a small window and a balcony, where a white-haired young woman sat in a rocking chair, holding a small teacup in one hand and a biscuit in the other, watching Lin's direction with amusement. Lin couldn't be bothered and averted his gaze. Seeing Boo, who was nervously looking down, Lin knew it was uneasy. Finally, he spoke up. Next time, consult me before doing something like this. Yes, Boo lifted its head, its eyes bright and assured loudly. Mr. Mountain, let's go inside and talk. I have a rough idea about the construction, Lin said. Lin and Mountain returned to the house and discussed for about an hour. Finally, they settled on a suitable plan. I've never heard of this architectural style of yours, but there are some aspects that can be learned from, Mountain remarked. Then I'll trouble you, Mr. Mountain. Regarding the payment, shall I pay now? Lin inquired. After the construction is complete, Mountain replied confidently, unconcerned about potential defaulters. I'll go prepare the raw materials first, Mountain said, as Lin and it had discussed using some raw materials combinations that it hadn't used before, which sounded quite interesting. Lin glanced at the evening sky. The moon overhead was somewhat blurry. It was strange. Lin thought, in the Erdolu kingdom, he could lift his head and see the goddess on the moon. But after coming to the continent of vanquished gods, he couldn't see the woman on the moon anymore because the entire moon was shrouded in mist, as if veiled. Arriving at the service hall, the elf receptionist quickly notified Toby of Lin's presence. Ha ha, had some business to attend to during the day. Toby chuckled. Uncle Toby, I'd like to inquire about some information from you. Lin said with a smile. What's the matter? Toby asked curiously. I heard that advancing from a third-level wizard apprentice to a first-level wizard requires building your own wizard tower. So I want to know how to obtain the blueprints for building a wizard tower, Lin explained. Oh, this? You've come to the right demon, Toby laughed. With a flick of his right hand in the air, Toby conjured a burning ring of fire. Within the ring of fire was another image. Toby reached into the ring of fire, pulled out a thick stack of blueprints, estimated to be at least four or five hundred pages. Building a wizard tower was indeed not simple. Just the blueprints alone were this extensive. These are the indexes, Toby said, handing over the large stack of blueprints to Lin. Lin took the blueprints, each sheet about the size of A1 paper, in both hands. Lin took a deep breath. You're telling me these are just the indexes. There are many types of wizard towers, and each wizard builds their tower differently. From what those wizards say, there are no two identical wizard towers in the world, Toby explained. You can take your time to go through them. It's good to learn from the experiences of predecessors. These indexes record some basic data on the construction of wizard towers in the history of the Academy. I don't quite understand your wizardry stuff, but if you find a suitable wizard tower, just let me know, and I'll get you detailed specific blueprints, Toby said. By the way, if the completion of your wizard tower exceeds 50%, you can bring your design blueprints to me. You can exchange the blueprints for the source materials needed to build the wizard. D-Tower, Toby continued. 50%. Have all the wizard towers listed in these indexes been successfully constructed? Lin asked. No, some have failed, but they all have at least half completion. Toby shook his head. Thank you, Uncle Toby, Lin said. Toby replied, find a lounge to read them. You students can browse through these blueprints for free, but you can't take them out of this room. Lin, of course, wasn't oblivious. These blueprints were all acquired by the Abyss Wizard Academy at the expense of source materials, funded generation after generation by the wizard apprentices themselves. Simply put, 
These blueprints were the crystallization of wisdom accumulated by countless third-level wizard apprentices aspiring to become official wizards. Perhaps this was the foundation on which wizard factions trained their successors. It was no wonder that so many wizard apprentices wanted to join large wizard factions. Lin sat in the room, flipping through the indexes. As he continued to read, his understanding of wizard towers gradually deepened. These indexes not only recorded names, but also included the style of the wizard towers, the source materials used at important nodes, and the general capabilities of the wizard towers. Moreover, these wizard towers could be continuously expanded. A wizard's tower in their first level stage would definitely differ from that in their second level stage. Some wizard towers had the ability to move, some focused more on defense, some leaned towards attack, and some were focused on experimentation. From material form to energy form, and then to biological form, the variety of wizard towers left Lin dazzled. He spent the whole night without filtering out the path he wanted to take, instead finding himself more confused the more he looked. Rubbing his brow, Lin stretched lazily. However, he wasn't discouraged. Preparation for the wizard tower certainly couldn't be hastily decided in one night. Such an important matter surely required careful consideration, and he was mentally prepared for it. Lin took out the communication conch from his spatial ring. After studying it for a while, he found that it was an alchemical item, incorporating some biological alchemy techniques. After confirming its safety, he infused his mental energy into it. The next moment, the communication conch responded, prompting him to choose a contact. Remarkably, all of this was done in his mind. There was only one contact at the moment, Jim, with whom he had exchanged communication signals not long ago. After confirming, it didn't take long for a voice to come through the communication conch. Mr. Lin, how can I help you? Jim's voice sounded. Do you have a way to sell alchemical creatures? Lin asked. You want to sell alchemical creatures? Hmm. Today, Lin had spent the whole day in various shops with a particular focus on alchemy-related stores. He found that his creation, Iron Serpent No. 1, still had a certain competitive edge. Lin didn't mind selling Iron Serpent No. 1, because only by selling it could he have the money to buy more resources for experiments and then continuously research new finished products. At this stage, Lin wasn't planning to leave Demon City. The academic and research environment here was truly wonderful. 